whether you live to be 100 or you live to be 13, you've reached people in ways that no one else can. So how does it make you feel that you've helped spread the word for other kids that can't, don't have an audience like you do? In some ways I feel like bad because I feel like I shouldn't be the one doing it. There should be so many other people doing it and it's just weird, but in other words, I feel really honored to be able to help other people. And why do you want to help other people? Why is that important to you? Because you're helping people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> thunder or lightning? <laughs> oh my god, it just started like pouring. Did you hear that? It's just like pouring now. Can you hear that? Yeah. Welcome yeah. to Florida. It's just now it's like storming. <laughs> I was on a baseball, like a football field, and you saw the rain just go like this. It was crazy. Like it was like, <laughs> you see, like coming yeah, towards you. Happening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Fine. When you've, you've been in treatment for a long time. Yeah. You've seen a lot of kids just not make it. Yeah. So you know, it's not like you, you, you've, been, you've been part of this whole thing for such a long time. Can you talk about how childhood cancer and, and and dying is a reality that people don't know, they don't understand it, unless they've been a part of it? Yeah, like when I was saying about people don't really get it until they see it, people don't really get it until they see it. So putting a face to someone who having cancer brought a little bit more of awareness, but then me saying, well, I'm pretty much like, there's no more treatment, then that made people go, whoa, like we need to do something. So it's kind of like the same thing with that. And people don't realize that kids pass a lot from this. And a lot of people think, a lot of, no, a lot of people know survivors. And so they think, oh yeah, you do a little bit of treatment because we're kids, we recover so fast. Or because we're kids, our bodies are different. Our bodies are the same. We we pass. We we go. It's yeah. <laughs> There's not much as much funding for pediatric cancer research. Can you talk about why kids are important and they have lives to live and there should be funding for them? I think kids are more important than adults at this point because. We are the adults. I mean, we're going to turn into adults eventually. If there's no kids, there's no adults. So it's kind of like common sense. You should put more of your money to the kids. And also, kids have so much more life to live. If you're 90 years old and you get cancer, I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, if you're two years old and you get cancer, you have a whole life ahead of you. If you're 90, you've lived most of your life. Come on. Like, it's just common sense. Some people don't have common sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think like after it, people started to realize that cancer is very, very, very aggressive and it does take kids' lives. And I'm pretty much on the border of that right now. And I think that people needed to realize that. I mean, saying that I have cancer, yeah. Okay, you have cancer, yeah. But when I say, there's really no more treatment left. People kind of jumped on it and they're like, whoa. After I posted that video, I mean, I've, a bunch of people just kept emailing my mom and calling and saying they wanted interviews, they wanted me to do Skype calls, just a bunch of things. And like I said, people are now just picking me up because they think I'm gonna go soon. That's, that, I don't feel that's necessarily right, but I mean, I can't. They're, at least they're doing something now, but it's so weird to have people like wanting me on their show or like wanting to talk to me because they think I'm like a celebrity. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder how Justin Bieber feels. Like this is so weird, um, but it's also really fun. And I know a lot of people are just saying that this is just the beginning of something new. So yeah. So I've had neuroblastoma three times, but 
recently uh, they found another type of cancer. It's leukemia, but it's pre-leukemia, so it's not fully developed leukemia, but it's starting in my bone marrow. So this time it's, well, I have two types of cancers, but now there's not really a certain study that has been, or anything that has been um, able to conquer both of neuroblastoma and leukemia at the same time. So the, that's our main problem right now, is finding a treatment for both cancers. You seem so calm, at peace and happy right now. Why do you seem so comfortable? I, I don't really think about it a lot. Like, I don't think about dying or anything right now. I mean, it's just living life while I can, and I'm not really thinking about it. Like I said, like, if it happens, then it happens. But it, at this point, I'm not in any pain. I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel any different. I mean, I'm on a low dose chemo, so I feel like I'm at least a little bit stable. And it's just, I don't, I'm not thinking about it. Like, sometimes it'll hit me that I have now two types of cancer and there's nothing really to control it anymore. And I'll just cry, but it, right now, I mean, I'm just gonna do all the things I've ever wanted to do and just live while I can. I mean, the doctors didn't say you're gonna die tomorrow. I mean, I'm not gonna die tomorrow. Well, we don't know that, but like, I'm not gonna, what I'm saying is like, it's not like it's that severe where it's all over my body. It's just starting and I'm just not really thinking about it. And I feel like if I set my heart to that, I. I'm going to be okay, I'm going to be okay. I mean, no one can say that. The doctors can't say that I'm going to die tomorrow. The doctors can't say I'm going to be okay. No one can really say that. But just to live the moment that I have, live every moment like it's your last one. Yeah. My mom and I get along so well and we comprehend each other. And we can just look into, into each other's eyes and she'll know what I'm saying to her. It's like twin telepathy. Like we're really close, yeah. I feel like when I don't have makeup on, it's not that I don't feel pretty. First of all, makeup to me is something fun. It's a hobby. It's not like I need makeup to feel gorgeous. Or like makeup makes my confidence go up, but it doesn't make me have all my confidence. I have great confidence going out with no makeup, but just putting on false eyelashes makes me feel better. So, um, yeah, I guess, whoops, I just kicked this. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> In a hundred years, how do you want to be remembered? What do you want people to remember about Talia? She... Why do you say, like, in a hundred years? In a hundred years, I want people to remember me as the bubbly girl who wanted to do something about childhood cancer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, are you afraid? What is your biggest fear right now? Um, I don't really have any fears at this point. Okay, that's good, that's good. No, why are you not afraid? Why are you seem so at peace with, with things? I don't know, I feel like I've done, I feel like I've done the things that I've wanted to do, which was bring attention to this in. <laughs> I feel like I've brought the attention to what I've wanted to bring the attention to. <laughs> and uh, I just don't really feel like there's, anything more that I've wanted to do. Well, there's so much more that I want to do, obviously, but like the basics, like if I did pass soon, then people would know that that girl tried to do this and we need to do something in her honor. I feel like at this point, the internet is some, if you want to get something out there, go to the internet. <laughs> Things get so spread, things spread so fast through the internet that 
if I wanted to say something, I just hop on YouTube and be like, hey, this is going on, and it'll be like viral in two seconds. And then you can share it with your friends, and it just gets around really fast. Now you're kind of a comedian. What, where do you get your sense of humor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my mom's not that funny. Neither is my dad. I don't know. TV probably. <laughs> YouTube, I don't know. Right. Tell Taylor something that nobody in the world knows about you. One secret. <laughs> okay. I don't know. All right, well, our basic interview's done, but I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever kissed a boy? Where did these questions <laughs> come from? Okay. Not from me. <laughs> if you had to go on a date with Justin Bieber or One Direction. Yeah. What, Justin both? Bieber all the way. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what are the three things you like most about Justin Bieber? I really like his personality. Meaning, he's very funny, he's very giving, very caring, very kind, all them things. Um, I love his looks, because he's very cute, very cute, very attractive. Um, and I love his style, too. He has a really cool style. Like, punk rock, but like, edgy, yet like, romantic, feminine. So if he asked you to go on a date, what would you say? I don't know how to think about it. Put him into your schedule. <laughs> I don't know. Good enough. If you had one wish in the world, what would it be? And don't say a million wishes. <laughs> one wish. <laughs> I've never thought of it. And start out with if I had one wish. If I had one wish. I don't know. Hmm. If I had one wish, I would wish for... Hmm. If I had one wish, I would wish for the cure to cancer. Yeah. That's what I would wish for. <laughs>